All right, so it looks like we're actually live. Who knows what will happen uh, or how long this broadcast will actually last. So I'm just going to roll with it while we can. Okay, we're back. I have no idea how many people will show up or what's going on, but in the end, I think I get a recording out of this, so that's all that matters. One of the things... Uh, <clears throat> that I like about the Great Bells of History system is that it does take the time to actually invest a little bit in, in the system itself to give you the period specific feel. So Ancients back in the time of uh, Alexander is very different in its gameplay from the early Roman period through to the late Roman period and Justinian's era. Uh, through to now and uh, everything in between. You know, even if we go back to the, some of the, the, the chariots, uh, chariots of fire and stuff like that, each system has its own unique feel. Oh, look, there's a bug. Go away. Go on. So in this particular system, uh, as I've mentioned before, there are a few unique attributes. You've got two very different military systems working here, and so that can often be uh, a lot of fun and... I'm going to talk about that more in just a second. Well, I'm just going to check one thing over here on my PC, make sure it's muted. Yeah, okay. So, uh, where were we? Right, so as I said, there's a, there's a variety of different uh, things going on here uh, that, that are very period uh, specific. And in this particular instance, we've got kind of an asymmetrical uh, battle going on here. This is the Battle of uh, Lignitz, uh, which was, I believe, uh, fought in 1241 in April at some point. In fact, it's April 9th, as I look down on the page. I can see that's actually the day that my son was born. So there you go. Yeah, you've got the uh, the Polish uh, alliance, I would call them. You've got Teutonic Knights and you've got uh, Poles and you've got some other dudes that I can't read upside down and a variety of Silesians, a variety of other forces all, you know, hanging out together here fighting the Mongol hordes who I would say are you know, more of a generic set of forces. They're broken up into Tumans or Tumans, uh, I would probably call this a Tuman. Uh, the blue here, and or the orange and the yellow, denote the uh, divisions of forces, the groupings of forces, and you would uh, you can see that there's light and heavy cavalry in each one. All right, so that's all fair enough so far, yeah? <coughs> Excuse me. There are, in fact, though, heavy cata cataphracts, which would be one of these guys, I think. That's got a yellow, uh, yellow char characters for the HC. Let me just put my hand behind here so you can see it. See the yellow HC there? So that's a cataphracted uh, horse uh, formation versus a, a typical he heavy cavalry unit. And they all have composite bows or, or uh, yeah, these guys all fire with composite bows, generally speaking. And then the cataphractic guys have lances or whatever else the case may be. So you've got a, a, a variety uh, of forces on the Mongol side. They're all generically horsemen and they're all generic, generically have uh, the ability to fire arrows and they all have the ability to uh, engage in combat, uh, either mounted or unmounted. So you've got quite a bit of flexibility there. And you can actually remount your horses as well, which is kind of cool. So <clears throat> where are we at? We're in turn three, and we're sitting on this activation over here. I've got these uh, Teutonic Knights, which you can see. I'll give you a little bit of a close-up here. Uh, hello, hello, whoever just joined. Uh, these are Heavy Cavalry Knights. Uh, they have a morale of nine or a troop quality of nine and a movement rate of seven. Pretty powerful unit, but uh, they are somewhat impetuous, and we'll see the negative negative impact of that in just a moment. Uh, one of the things that you need to do with uh, with in this game system is play the balance between the two the two sides here to uh, 
because there's some unique capabilities that these these chaps have, the Mongols have. So they're able to uh, you know sort of do a hit and run attacks, but they're also on the d- defense. They're allowed to feign retreat, so they're allowed to pretend to retreat. And if you don't roll well on your morale, then you're going to have to follow them and that will get you into all sorts of trouble because when you end your movement, these guys can then potentially roll a die, turn around, and immediately shock attack you, which I think is altogether just a little bit rude, but nevertheless, there you have it. So we're going to uh, we're gonna have a look at the Teutonic Knights over here and see how we want to handle them and what we want to do with them. I'm really not <clears throat> 100% sure on what we're going to do. I do know I'm going to have a sip of my drink. Because <laughs> that's strong. Because uh, Irish whiskey is always good for your cerebral patterns, right? Okay, so we're going to activate two tonic knights. Now I've got six. Yeah, I've got six uh, command points here, and I can issue a line command to these guys. Actually, he's here. I can issue a line command to these guys, which would activate all of these chaps. Two uh, commands here that would uh, make it uh, three commands, and then I can move my leader at some point. But uh, for those of you that uh, looks like people are popping in and out of here, so I'm just going to let uh, I'm going to let you guys come in and, and do uh, come in and leave and and post comments as you see fit, and I will uh, endeavor to answer them if I see them pop up. Let me just uh, yeah, there's nothing there right now, so I'm just going to keep going. So we're going to activate these guys. I've got these. Uh, these uh, Templar knights and the Salesians here on the left, I want to try and reinforce their left flank and uh, press on at the heavy cavalry. I'm, I am concerned about the light cavalry, but as soon as I start advancing on the light cavalry, they can pull all these bullshit stunts where they can feign retreat, and that's what I was talking about earlier on. So, uh, so let's just get on with it and see what happens. And I think I'll issue uh, movement commands to these two guys first, and then we'll do the line. Uh, uh, separately so let's see I've got to pay for the little river stream thing which is going to cost me plus one and it is not uh, oh it's going to give me three cohesion penalties to cross the stream so we're not going to do that because I can't really afford to take cohesion hits at this point (coughs) so we'll make the enemy do that let's do this then Uh, one two, three. Now, here, right now, uh, these guys, because their movement rate is higher than these chaps, I can begin this uh, feigning retreat exercise if I if I wanted to. And so, uh, once I get within two hexes, I've got it now to clear. This guy has to declare that he wants to feign retreat. And so he will. He will, in fact, try and draw this sucker in here. So he's going to go... Uh, he retreats either three hexes or five hexes. So he goes one... Oh, see, now here, here's a good point. Which way should I go? Because if I cross this stream, I'm going to pick up a bunch of um, cohesion hits. So I'm not going to fame retreat there. So we'll go two to here. Now this guy will. And actually, shit, he won't either because he's going to be in trouble, right? Okay, so we might just uh, see what happens here in standard fight. Uh, if they indeed, indeed, if they attack. So we'll go to here, two. Well, it's not two, it's one, two, three, four, five to there. And that we now get a reaction fire because these guys have composite bows and we get to roll the dice. I roll a three, a three is gonna be a hit. Yeah, I've got to roll basically uh, a zero to miss, I think, or a, a nine to miss. Uh, and if they, even if they roll a nine, I think that's still gonna be hit, but they go low ammo. So that's gonna put a cohesion marker on this chap here for one. He doesn't take a troop quality check or morale check or anything like that. He is just closed in, and he may, uh, in, in he is going to probably have to uh, conduct a shock attack. So you pop a little counter on this guy, and he's not going to have to uh, do a TQ check because he's a heavy cavalry or a knight. So he's not going to have to worry about that. Now let's see. What else we got here? I want to try and get a multiple units on this and get a bonus. So maybe I'll do individual commands here and we'll move this this fella. One, two. Now this guy will feign retreat. One, two, three. And this guy has to roll under his uh, 
which he does do under his TQ rating. And that, man, let me just make sure that's right, is it under? It'd suck if it was over because you can't roll over nine. Uh, yada yada. The rules are not particularly well written in this regard here. I always have a hard time. Uh, move within two hexes, vacant, pop, 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 rolls the die. If the die rolls the same or lower, hang on a second. He retreats three to five hexes, not less and not more. Using general principles. Attack uses the FR reaction die roll. Oh, it's the FR reaction die roll. That's right. It's a special die roll. Where's the table? Ta-da. That's why I was thinking it was too easy to avoid. There's a table for it. Where is it? There's going to be a table here somewhere. Oh, it's in the scenario. It's per scenario. And it is, he said, looking furiously for it. Retreat edge, withdrawal levels, game length, replacement leaders. Fame retreat, here it is. Oh my god, a two. Okay, so he is gonna follow, that's gonna suck. So now he has to follow one, two, three, four. So he advances right up to this guy, and here's what happens now. Now my guy, when I say my guy, the Mongol rolls, and he rolled under his he rolls. Uh, he rolled under his uh, command rating, his uh, troop collie rating. So he does indeed get to turn around, and he can either uh, shock attack or he can uh, merely fire his arrows. And he's going to fire his arrows because that's always a good thing. Oh, rolls a nine. That is actually going to be a miss, and he's going to go low ammo. That is not what you want to see as a Mongol. Let me tell you. All right, so there's that guy. Now he is stuck all the way down here. Now because he was successful, this dude can't attack him uh, right off the bat. He's gonna have to wait till the shot combat phase. So we'll put a, a no TQ check on this guy. And now we're gonna move the rest of, uh, we're gonna move this guy. And we might as well go through this freaking exercise again. Let's see. And here's the other thing uh, with the, with these guys. If you if you're <coughs> if you move more than four hexes, then you also have to roll for impetuousness as well, which is a real pain in the backside. One, two, and now this guy will say, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna uh, retreat," and he does do that. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. And he will fire his arrows at that guy. And he rolls a six, and that's going to be a hit. So we'll pop a hit on him. He gets a hit. And now we have to see if we recover. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so he, he gets to roll to see if he can shoot. And he does. And this guy also gets to roll to see if he, if he is uh, suckered by this. And he is not suckered by this. So they, so actually they don't get to attack, do they? That's how that works. My apologies. Got that in the wrong order. There's a definite order to all this. Now we will uh, try and bolster up this line a little bit by moving this to here, moving this guy to here, and this guy will go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So he's going to have to. Uh, Stay out in the open. You know what, I'll move him to here. All right. He is now finished. Now I can actually try and roll for momentum for that guy, and I think I will. I roll a one. So he's gonna activate his guys again. The uh, leader over here is not going to try. Well, maybe he will. Let's see if he, let's see if I roll an even number, he'll try and trump. And I roll an even number, so he will try and trump. And he rolls a nine, and fails the trump. So now he's finished for the turn. See, that's the impact of trying to trump when you think you're a smart ass. Now I get to move, so I will pop this guy up here. Except that I didn't resolve these two combats, so we probably should do that. Let's do that now. I'm going to roll two dice. Uh, the white one will be the chap on the left. We get two really good rolls for the combats. 
We are going to be on the six table because we just know that. I think because we're is it the six or the seven table. There'll be no advantage. Oh, these are light, aren't they? No, that's heavy. So heavy combat, heavy uh, knights are going to be... Oh, versus heavy knights will be the seven table. And I said I roll the seven. That's going to be a two, three result. Are there any mods? I don't believe so. There's no attack of superiority. So that's just going to be two on these guys and three on those guys. We will get a little counter. Excuse me. A little counter here. That's those guys. Now this other attack, it's heavy cav, heavy cav versus light cav. So it's going to be attack superior. And we roll the seven. And that's probably going to put us on the nine column. Yep, the nine column. And we roll the seven, that's a two three, which is gonna double up to a two six. That's probably gonna get real close to knocking that guy out, but not quite. So we do that. So that's actually not a bad result there. I'm gonna do that guy there. And that guy gets two. And we have one more combat to do over here where we didn't even uh, put the little doohickey in. Roll for that guy. He rolls a five. A five on the nine table. A five on the nine table, two, three. So that'll be a two, six as well. And that's the results for that. Just like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's that activation. The second activation. They finished those combats from earlier on. We are not going to continue the combat here. Why wouldn't I on those two, on these two light cab? Of course I would, right? All right, let's see what happens there. Maybe even on this one. I think we should do that. I need three. Where's another die? Here we go. All right. The red die will be the far one with the five on it and the white and the yellow of those. That's really good. That's really bad. And that's really average. But that might be enough to knock those uh, two units out. <clears throat> so this one is, a, is on the nine table and they're attack superior. So that guy's gonna route straight off the bat. So he's routing and he's gonna retreat too. This guy's gonna pick up two though. So he's gonna be on the four. That there. This dude is a three on the nine table. A three on the nine table attack superior two four. Two four. So that's gonna route that guy. It's gonna pop this guy up to a four. That's a three. Where? There we go. And this guy is gonna route. He retreats two. And this guy rolled a one and he's on the seven table and that is not going to be good. That's a three, two. So he's going to pop up to a five. And this guy is going to pop up to a uh, five as well. I'm going to need a five. There we go. So they're kind of, they're kind of duking it out going even Stevens there. I've uh, got a comment here. <clears throat> is this ancient warfare? Yes, it is, Sam, I am. And uh, what time period is the battle set in? It's set in 40, uh, 12, 12. 41, 9th of April, the Battle of uh, Liegnitz. This is the Mongols versus the Poles, the Teutonic Knights, the Templar Knights, and the Silesians, and a bunch of other ragtag, uh, medium-sized infantry chappies. So you can see them over here. I'll zoom out for you so you can see the whole field, battlefield. And uh, this was the reason why I chose this But No, oh, we lost him. Okay, there you go. So uh, the reason why we chose this battle was because it was the easternmost, sorry, the westernmost uh, progression of the of the Mongol forces. All right. So I answered those three questions that were posted. Sorry, I didn't see them, but I'm engrossed with the game, so I'll try and get to them. So if I don't answer you straight away, please try and be patient. Looks like an SBI game. Uh, it's not an SBI game. It's actually a. Uh, Great Battles of History is from GMT. Okay. 
Where were we? Let's see. I'm about 20 minutes into this. We've done the activation over there. Messed around with a few other things. I may have made a couple little mistakes here and there. Also, they're up to six now. Okay, I need a six. We'll flip that guy over. Take that off. This guy becomes a five. Do a little housekeeping here. We routed those light cavalry and their archers. And what else have we got going on? So that was a six rated leader that activated. Now we get to activate it, uh, the next six rated leader in the command cycle. And there's only one left now. Actually, there, uh, yeah, there's one left, which is over here. So this chap over here can activate. And there are no other six rated leaders on the map other than this one uh, that was just over here. But he tried to trump the second activation of these Teutonic Knights and failed. So now we just have this last little group of guys to go before we wrap up this turn. And then I'll probably wrap up the, the, the live stream because I'm finding it hard to talk my way through everything with you and answer questions and play the game live. Because I'm just not that good. So, I've got... This leader can activate... Any of the units except for the yellow chaps, if I recall. I believe that's the case. Okay, now we're in a little slugfest going on here. And I am just... I am not going to touch that. I'm going to let that combat sit. I do... I have also made a little mistake here. Because all of these guys should have paid a penalty for crossing the stream... And that was a, uh, a fairly significant mistake. So what we're going to do is add, uh, we'll fix that in a minute. But I'm going to activate these light cavalry and, and issue one line order and move all of the all of the light cavalry. So we'll start with that. And they're going to have to cross that stream, which uh, this is actually the Kalka River. And that is going to hit us up for... Now, how is that zero? All well, the streams... Oh, I looked at that incorrectly. Okay, streams do not cause a penalty. Okay, good. Okay. So, no penalties here, so I haven't made a mistake here. All right, so we're going to... I still want to move this light cavalry up because I want to pepper the infantry over on this side of the board here and really uh, try and uh, soften them up a little bit before we charge in here. One, two, three. And we're using a line order. You'll see them you know, counter in a minute. Three, four, five, six, seven... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know what? I think there's a plus one. It's going to be a plus one to movement uh, to cross there. So we're going to have to do it like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And one, two, three, four, five. Six. What I should have done first is issued a a uh, command to this guy here to move back uh, one first. So let's do that. One, two, three, four, five. I'll just move him back one. That'll make life a little easier for these fellas so we can scoot these guys all across one. And then I can bring this guy up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Now here, uh, let's see. What I want to try and do is get uh, get some arrow shots in on this guy. So we want to fire at range, and we're going to do this by going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, to there. Okay, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4 commands. And a question from somebody. Okay, no problem, sir. I'm an old gamer from way back in the 70s. Have fun. I really play much anymore. Okay, thank you for uh, dropping in. All right, we've got a few other people here. Welcome. Pop your name up so I know who's watching. That'd be awesome. If not, that's great. We're going to uh, continue here. I used one line command. One, two, and three. That's five. I've got to one and one. I'm going to move the leader up to here. And we're going to flip him to finished. And I'm going to fire these uh, archers first. So, wow. There goes a die. Oh, my God. I didn't knock the table. That's got to be a win. Yeah, well, thanks for the sub, man. All right, here we go. Three arrow shots. We're just going to go left to right. I've got three dice here. I'll work it out in a second. 
And that's th two, no, one hit. Roll the two, that's definitely going to be hit. And then two nines, one nine, two nines, you can't see it, but there it is. And you've got to add uh, add one when you uh, when you um, roll the hit, when you move. And that means that these fellas will have missed, I believe, because they, and the range of two anyway, so they had to roll seven or less. So this bloke here is only going to get one damage. And I have a information counter here that has not been clipped. So let's clip him real quick. Pop him underneath here. Oh, he's already got one. So he's going to pop up to four. So he is now... 66% of the way to being screwed. This is going to get ugly. All right. Uh, so they fired, they fired, and they fired, and only one hit. And that was the end of that activation. Unless I want to try and go again. And you know what? I think I will. If I roll six or less, uh, they can go again. He rolls a one. There it is. So I am now going to use a, a line command to activate these fellas and they're, uh, they're going to do what uh, I think it's called harass and disperse or something like that. It's a uh, form of uh, combat where basically we're doing moving fire. So we're going to move up and fire and move back. And, but you leave the units where they are. You have to have a, a clear space of uh, up to four hexes. And so I'm just going to go one, two, three, four. So these are all except for the heavy cav. They can all uh, they can all do this. There's a heavy cab there. He's not going to do it either. But we're going to do harass and disperse. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, six units. So we'll roll these dice twice, and I'll make a note here of the numbers. We'll go left to right. We'll go red, yellow, and white. And that is some really shitty die rolling. So we've got a nine, a six, and a nine. And now we'll roll the next three. Uh, uh, an 8, a 1, and a 4. So, with a moving fire, it's considered to be adjacent fire. So, composite bow mounted, adjacent. Oh, we're going to roll a 9, but we have to add 1 when we are doing this moving fire business. And so, oh, we could have done shaft shower fire how awesome would that be all right so two misses and we're going left to right so the first one this guy missed can you see that guy over there there we go this guy missed the six is a hit so this guy takes a hit uh so we need a one we'll just put a one behind him there we're gonna roll for the leader the roll is zero nothing okay eight a zero would have been a, a hit on this guy so nine six nine nine six nine that's a miss the next guy eight is going to be a miss. A one is a hit. So we'll put that guy there. That's not clipped either. One, two, three, four, five. And the last guy, we'd love to get in on that four. That is going to be a hit as well. Okay, so that's the arrow uh, fire of that. And I think that's all I want to do for that activation. Is that all I want to do for that activation? I think it might be. So... No, I couldn't. I couldn't pass through and charge yet. You got to be patient with the with the Mongol uh, forces. Hey, Kyle. How you doing, man? Uh, you got to be patient with the Mongol forces. You got to kind of chip away at these guys. Not that you really need to worry. Look at these. These are twos and threes. I should just attack, shouldn't I? Where can I get in here? I could activate these guys again. Let's do this. That's one line command. One, two, and three more. Let's do three more archery shots at this. This wanker here and try and kill him off. Nine and eight and a four. Okay, so that's one hit. Damn it. So that pops up to a five. It's gonna be high. He's been proven difficult to kill. I need a five. Counter. It's not clipped, but that's okay. I'll live with it. So it's arrow fire. Oh, and I've got a nine. So the first guy is low ammo. Let's not forget that. Where is the low ammo marker? Low missile, whatever. And let me see. That's everybody that I can activate, I believe. And he is now finished. And that is the end of the turn. I've got to do some route movement over here. So I'm going to just pop the messaging down. Uh, we're going to go over here. Over here. 
It's a little bit bouncy just because we're streaming, so sorry about that. Okay, I'm gonna route move. Do I route move now? I believe I do. Let me just check real quick. I think that's where we're at in that turn sequence because everybody's finished. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Rally phase and there ain't no rallying going on. These guys are moving and they're going to move their full movement rate. That's going to be bad. They're off. So that's off. Dead. And that guy's going to be dead. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, he's off. Well, things are looking a little bit grim for the... Well, not really looking grim. They've lost two, uh, two units. We moved them off the end of the map. You probably didn't see that because I was so... Uh, so zoomed in. So there is that. And the these guys have lost just the one, just the one uh, Polish cab unit. All right, so I'm probably going to wrap it up there. I think we say adios. Talk to you guys soon. Uh, thanks for uh, tuning in just for a few minutes while we got through a couple of activations and had a little a little play with the Mongols. Lots of fun. Talk to you soon.